The most powerful solar storm in the past 20 years recently hit Earth, creating stunning auroras, commonly known as the Northern and Southern Lights. This event was triggered by a group of sunspots approximately 16 times the size of Earth. These sunspots release several X-class solar flares and coronal mass ejections directly towards our planet. The solar emissions cause severe geomagnetic storms, reaching the highest intensity level of G5, marking the most intense storm since the 2003 Halloween storms. As a result, the vibrant auroras were visible much farther south than usual, with the northern lights seen as far south as Florida and Mexico, and the southern lights visible in countries like New Zealand, Australia, Chile, and Argentina. The recent solar storms have impacted technology both in space and on Earth. Elon Musk noted that the Starlink satellite service was experiencing issues due to the storm. He mentioned on the social platform X that its satellites were under a lot of pressure but holding up so far. The storms also disrupted power grids, GPS systems, and high-frequency communications in certain areas. These events suggest that the solar maximum, a period of peak solar activity in the sun's 11-year cycle, might arrive earlier than anticipated. As the sun's magnetic field flips, we can expect more geomagnetic storms in the coming months. While these storms could provide more spectacular displays of auroras, they could further disrupt radio communications and electrical infrastructure. The recent geomagnetic disturbance was triggered by a phenomenon on the surface of the sun, specifically by the sunspot group identified as AR3664. Sunspots are temporary dark areas on the sun's surface, appearing dimmer because they are cooler than their surroundings. In the case of AR3664, the temperature within these sunspots ranges between 3000 and 4500 Kelvin, notably cooler than the surrounding areas. AR3664 came into view of Earth a few days ago, initially seeming relatively ordinary. However, it swiftly expanded in size, growing to be 16 times wider than our planet. This enlargement made it one of the largest sunspots observed during the current solar cycle. The captivating light display witnessed 150 million kilometers away from the sun is a result of the solar storm instigated by AR3664. This storm occurs when the sunspot group releases a burst of energy in the form of solar flares and coronal mass ejections. These charged particles interact with the Earth's magnetosphere, resulting in the phenomenon known as auroras or northern lights. Looking forward, as AR3664 rotates back into alignment with our planet after two weeks, there is potential for further geomagnetic disturbances and auroras. It's crucial to stay informed about space-related news and phenomena by subscribing to our channel for regular space updates. AR3664 released a total of 75 M-class flares and 10 X-class flares within a week, contributing to 50% of this year's X-class flares. A solar flare denotes a sudden, intense burst of radiation on the sun, resulting in a dazzling flash of light across various wavelengths. These bursts can endure from minutes to hours and carry immense energy. The light from these flares reaches our planet in approximately 8 minutes and 20 seconds. Flares are graded by their potency, B-class being the smallest, followed by C, M, and finally X, the most powerful. Each class varies in strength by a factor of 10. Additionally, each class is subdivided into a scale from 1 to 9. While C-class flares typically have minimal impact on Earth, M-class flares can induce short-term radio blackouts at the poles and minor radiation storms, potentially endangering astronauts. Many people often confuse solar flares with coronal mass ejections, CMEs. A CME refers to a vast cloud of magnetized particles ejected into space from the sun. 
These eruptions occur when the sun's magnetic fields undergo explosive realignments, propelling solar material into space. CMEs travel at speeds exceeding a million miles per hour and may take up to three days to reach Earth. Unlike solar flares, CMEs are expansive clouds of gas expanding into space. When a CME interacts with Earth's magnetic fields, it can generate currents that drive particles toward Earth's poles, resulting in the formation of auroras. In summary, while both solar flares and CMEs originate from the realignment of the Sun's magnetic field, they emit different phenomena, exhibit different appearances, travel differently, and have distinct effects near planets like Earth. Solar flares manifest as bright flashes of light, whereas CMEs appear as vast clouds of magnetized particles traversing through space. The surge in solar activity commenced on May 3rd with the detection of an X 1.6 solar flare. Over the subsequent 48 hours, two more X-class flares were identified. However, the situation escalated on the following day when the sunspot region discharged an even more substantial X 4.5 flare, releasing an immense amount of energy. The first coronal mass ejection, CME, was then observed departing from the sun on May 6. A couple of days later, on May 8, another CME was observed following an M 8.6 flare. Subsequently, on May 9, two X-class flares generated two additional CMEs. By May 10, four CMEs were en route to Earth. Scientists hypothesized that the last three CMEs merged into a single larger event, termed a cannibal CME, due to their differing speeds and overlapping trajectories. When a CME reaches Earth, an intriguing phenomenon occurs. Earth's magnetic field deflects the solar storm. The magnetic fields converge and form a funnel where the gas cascades down on the day side of the pole, resulting in the daylight aurora. The magnetic fields then stretch further and converge, eventually breaking like a magnetic rubber band. Gas from the solar storm then streams along the magnetic lines toward the poles on the night side, producing the nighttime aurora. Auroras are commonly associated with a vibrant green hue, but during particularly intense displays, they can illuminate the sky with striking red glows. These color variations arise from the types of particles involved and the altitudes at which these interactions occur. Blue and purple auroras are observed when solar particles interact with molecular nitrogen up to 62 miles or 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Green auroras form when these particles interact with oxygen at altitudes ranging from 100 to 300 kilometers, approximately 62 to 186 miles above the Earth. However, the mesmerizing red auroras we occasionally witness occur during intense solar storms, when these interactions take place with oxygen at higher altitudes, between 300 and 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Furthermore, for red auroras to be visible to the naked eye, they must be at least 10 times brighter than green auroras. Geomagnetic storms can have profound effects on our electrical power grids and satellite infrastructure. During these storms, geomagnetically induced currents GICs, can flow through power transmission lines and transformers. This can lead to transformer saturation and overheating, resulting in various electrical malfunctions. Specifically, transformers may fail, protective equipment can trip, transmission lines might overload, and generators could sustain damage. In severe cases, such issues can lead to widespread blackouts. An example of this occurred in 1989 in Quebec, Canada, when a geomagnetic storm left 6 million people without power for nine hours. Additionally, in October 2003, the Halloween storms caused extensive disruptions to satellites and communications, as well as power grid problems in Sweden. In 2022, a solar flare resulted in the loss of 40 newly launched Starlink satellites. Currently, the Sunspot Group AR3664 has shifted behind the Sun's disk, rendering it temporarily invisible from Earth. 
Consequently, any solar emissions from this group will not affect our planet for the next two weeks. However, AR3664 is projected to re-emerge and face Earth again in two weeks. Drawing from past observations of sunspot behaviors, there exists a possibility that this group could remain active upon its reappearance. Just before it rotated out of view on May 11th, AR3664 exhibited significant solar activity, including an X1.8 and a much larger X5.8 flare, with the latter associated with a CME. This activity suggests that AR3664 may continue to produce solar flares in the future, indicating that its activity cycle is not yet concluded. AR3664 is no ordinary sunspot. Its size is significant enough to be visible from Earth without magnification. However, it is crucial to refrain from attempting to observe the sun without proper protection, such as solar filters or eclipse glasses. If you found the video informative, please like it and subscribe to our channel for more updates. See you in the next one.